fisheries harvesting yellow food and big eye tuna while targeting skipjack in the eastern Pacific Ocean, EPO, are not managed optimally with respect to economic value. Big eye tuna are generally caught at before they reach full size so cannot fetch the higher prices obtained from mature fish which are usually harvested by long line fleets and sold to the sashimi market. This study evaluates the economic and biological trade-offs of managing the fishery to determine how the economic value may increase with different harvest strategies while the spawning biomass of both species is maintained at the optimal sustainable levels. This study uses three analytical models to assess the economic and biological trade-offs in four possible scenarios with different combinations of burst seine and long line fishing effort. The first model evaluates the biological trade-offs under various effort combinations of long line, LL, and burst seine, PS, that could reach the same optimal biomass level, measured by the spawning biomass ratio, SBR. The second model evaluates the long-term optimal equilibrium economic value under various effort combinations. The third model evaluates the dynamic, short-term, trajectory of recovery path of the guy tuna under various policy options. The analytical results show that economics and conservation are not incompatible. The total value of the PS and LL fisheries in EPO increases from $1,246 million to $1,339 million. shows that the economic value of the resource is highly dependent on the allocation of effort between the long line and purse seine fisheries. C. 
since the long line and purse same fisheries in Evoir formed by multiple users in multiple countries slash groups. The ideal scenarios would not be feasible without administrative measures and or economic incentives. A purse seam is made of a long wall of netting framed with float line and lead line, usually, of equal or longer length than the former, and having purse rings hanging from the lower edge of the gear, through which runs a purse line made from steel wire or rope which allow the pursing of the net. For most of the situation, it is the most efficient gear for catching large and small pelagic species that is shoaling. are into large dense schools near the surface or aggregated by artificial means, such as floating object or, at night, by light. A purse seine is made of a long wall of netting framed with float line and lead line and having purse rings hanging from the lower edge of the gear, through which runs a purse line made from steel wire or rope which allow the pursing of the net. <laughs> For most of the situation, it is the most efficient gear for catching large and small pelagic species that is showing. Purse signers are the most important and most effective vessels to catch aggregating species near the surface. For pursing the sen, therefore hauling the purse line, a winch or a capstan is used. The purse line is either stored on the already mentioned winch, purse then winch, or kept separately on a purse line wheel. In general large and or modern purse signers are equipped with purse then winch while, small, more artisanal signers may use the association, capstan plus purse line wheel. On board large sailor, another capstan on foredeck can be used for hauling the tow line. Power block is used to transporting the nets on board the vessel, or back onto the wall. Handling mode. The modern distant waters purse signers are equipped to freeze their cash. 
fishery production systems, semi-industrial and industrial, fishing environment, marine coastal and high sea waters between 0 and 300 meters deep. Fishing operations. There are two different methods of purse sailing, the one-boat system and the two-boat system. Both have their advantages and disadvantages, but purse sailing with a single boat is now considered more economical, even though shooting a purse sen with the two-boat system may be quicker and a larger gear can also be operated than with the one-boat system. The purse signers, American type is not much adapted to rough weather conditions compared to the purse signers, European type. The high position of a heavy power block typical net hauling device used on the American signers can itself cause problems of stability during fishing operations in rough waters. 1. Searching for fish. Fish schools can be detected near to the surface by visual observation, fish or seabirds flying over, from a crow's nest in the vessel or by using echo sounder and sonar. 2. Setting the net. The vessel moves ahead, drops skiff or buoy with net attached and moves in circular path paying out net over stern. It normally takes less than 5 minutes. 3. Completing the set. The vessel has completed the circle and is about to retrieve the buoy or skiff in order to take aboard the bridle and purse lines. 4. Ready to purse. The extremities of the float line and lead line are retrieved on board. Each end of the purse line is taken to the purse winch and both ends pulled in together, starting the pursing of the bottom of the net. 5. Pursing proceeding. The bottom of the net is gradually being drawn tight. 6. Pursing complete. The purse rings have been pulled up and are hanging over the side of the boat. The bunt is secured forward so that the fish cannot leave the net. 7. Rings aboard. Rings aboard, web being hauled. The purse rings have been lifted aboard, they are fastened, then the purse line removed from the rings. The wing opposite to bunt side is passed through power block, and over one or two hours, the net webbing with both the float line and lead line and, also rings is progressively hoisted and being taken aboard. 8. Ready to remove fish. The net has been hauled until the fish are gathered in the bunt, close to the ship's side. Brailing or pumping can now begin. Fishery area. Temperate and tropical countries. Issues. Environmental. Compared to most of the other fishing techniques, purse seining in general, is not harmful to natural resources or environment. Discard. In certain cases, the potential negative impact produced by a purse sen may result from the fact that catching performance are not very selective, in terms of both species and sizes of fish, when there is important bycatch of non-targeted species or too many small fish. Incidental capture of dolphins by large tuna purse signers fishing in certain high sea areas is regarded as an irresponsible fishing practice. Special techniques have been developed to reduce bycatch of dolphins, the Medina Panel and Back Down operation, which secure that encircled. Canned tuna is not just a tasty, protein-rich snack, it's a massive global industry. How massive? Try around 4 million tons caught every year, which has put enormous pressure on stocks. Sustainability-conscious consumers have to be careful which tuna products they buy, because some species are at risk and others are overfished, explains Dr. Quentin Hanich, leader of the Fisheries Governance Research Program at Wollongong University. On a global level, there is a failure of cooperation between countries who can't agree on necessary compromises that will protect fisheries, he says. And in the absence of that consensus, labeling and consumer pressure sends a strong market signal that people want sustainable fishing. When attempting to choose an eco-friendly tuna, you're bound to be bewildered by opaque packaging claims. 
but with a little know-how, you'll be able to recognize sustainable tuna on the supermarket shelf. Boost to sustainably sourced tuna in Australian supermarkets. One recent development looks like good news for the world's tuna stocks. In early February 2016, major canned tuna company John West Australia announced a partnership with the Marine Stewardship Council, WWF and Pacifical, a tuna supplier committed to sustainable methods, to make what it calls, the single biggest brand commitment to help end unsustainable fishing methods within the canned tuna industry in Australia. It appears to be more than a marketing move. As a result of a collaborative effort by WWF, Pacifical, MSC and John West, Australians will now see over 100 million cans of clearly labelled Pacifical MSC certified sustainably sourced tuna in supermarkets, WWF Australia CEO Dermot de Gorman says. The magnitude of this, affecting a huge 43% of Australia's canned tuna, makes this a world first. Step 1. Look for sustainable species of tuna. The John West collaboration with environmental interests is a big step in the right direction, but there's still plenty of opportunity to be confused by canned tuna labeling. There are a variety of fish names on packaging, says Nathaniel Pell from Greenpeace. If you see, thunus, or, genus thunus, it simply means tuna. Look for skipjack, Catsawonus pelamis, which is considered the most sustainable tuna. Skipjack accounted for 68% of the 2.6 million tons of Western Pacific tuna caught in 2013, and its fish stocks are considered healthy by the Oceanic Fisheries Program, OFP, an organization that provides fish stock data to fishers in the Western Pacific Ocean. You also come across yellowfin, Thunus albicares, tuna, which is controversial because of disagreement about its level of sustainability. The OP and the International Seafood Sustainability Foundation, ISSF, an industry body comprised of some of the world's biggest commercial fishing companies, says yellowfin stocks are healthy. However, Greenpeace considers yellowfin stock levels near threatened, and says that, without renewed and coordinated efforts, yellowfin will soon fall into the threatened category. Yellowfin is fished at its limit in certain parts of the Central Pacific and there is probably overfishing in the Western Pacific, says Hanich. It's not a black and white situation and depends on which fisheries the tuna comes from. So skipjack is a safer choice if the label does not mention the catch region. Another species used for canning is long-tailed tuna, Thunus tungol. Hell says he wouldn't recommend tungol as a sustainable choice because there are not yet enough complete stock assessments, so we don't know how healthy the fish stocks are. Step 2. Look for a sustainable fishing method. Hole and line caught tuna. The best approach to sustainability, says Hanich, is the pole and line fishing method, in which fish are caught with a single pole, line and hook. Compared to the more prevalent purse send method, see below, pole and line is considered the best way to reduce overfishing and bycatch. This method also requires more fishermen than the big industrial operations, creating more local jobs in the Western Pacific, where almost all Australian tuna comes from. FAD Free Purse Send Tuna a purse sen is a large floating wall of netting that encircles a school of fish and is, first, on the bottom, preventing fish from escaping by swimming downward. The catch is harvested by hauling the net aboard or bringing it alongside the vessel. Purse sen fishing vessels are responsible for nearly 62% of the global tuna catch. Greenpeace's position on purse sen is that it's acceptable, as long as it's not combined with fish aggregation devices, fads. Fads are floating objects that attract tuna, but can also draw the attention of other marine life. Referred to as bycatch, these species are often swept up in the nets along with the target species. With fads in use, skipjack tuna often shoal together with young big eye tuna, Thunus obesus, which is classified as overfished in the Western Pacific, or yellowfin tuna, as well as sharks, rays, and turtles. ISSF statistics show that FADs double the bycatch rate in the Pacific. In the Atlantic, FADs increase bycatch rates eightfold. Verifying whether a fish catch is FAD-free is tricky. If the canned tuna label says per sen but does not say FAD-free, a better sustainable choice is pollen line caught tuna, says Pell. According to Pell, the massive commercial purse sen operations in the Western Pacific are dominated by Japan, Korea, the United States and Taiwan. 
He says these huge ships harvest local resources but often exclude local fishers, and they can haul up 3,000 tons of tuna in a single fishing trip, almost double the annual catch of some Pacific Island countries. Only 5 to 10 percent of value of the whole tuna catch goes back to Pacific. You'll see Omega-3 claims on canned tuna, but products can be labeled a good source of OMEGA-3 when containing at least 60 mg of DHA and EPA for serving. However, this is just a tad over 10% of the Heart Foundation's recommended 500 mg of Omega-3 daily. Canned tuna is generally not the best source of the essential fatty acid Omega-3 compared to other oily fish, such as fresh salmon, mackerel or canned sardines. The omega-3 content of canned tuna varies widely, so you'll need to carefully check the nutrition panel rather than relying on good source labeling. For example, we found omega-3 content ranging from 80 mg per 100 g for John West tuna tempters mango chili, to 970 mg per 100 g for the sapgold tuna pieces with lemon and cracked pepper. In comparison, canned pink salmon has around 1,410 mg per 100 g. Buying tuna in oil will add kilojoules. John West tuna slices in spring water has 484 kilojoules per 100 grams. The John West tuna slices in olive oil blend has 690 kilojoules. Flavored packaged tunas marketed as lunch snacks can also have extra sodium and sugar added to bump up taste. The Sirena bruschetta tuna dill and pickle has 526 mg of sodium. Sirena tuna in spring water and lemon has 162 mg per 100 grams. 